Listen to him, listen to him. Straight to that breaking story in West London. The London Fire Brigade right now are dealing with a serious fire in a tower block in West London. Trying to make sense of a breaking news story as it happens, amid the real-time swirl of events, is often hard. As one of the reporters who covered this dreadful tragedy, amid all the heartbreaking action, one small but extraordinary detail stuck in my mind. A baby was apparently caught by a member of the public after being dropped from Grenfell Tower as it was engulfed with flames. This is according to an eyewitness. I haven't been able to get the story of the Grenfell baby out of my mind since. Did it happen? Could it happen? I suppose also as a parent, I ask myself, what must it be like to be so desperate that you're willing to trust your children to the luck of a stranger's arms. I set out to find out exactly what happened, to nail down the facts. The first thing to do is to try to trace the story back to its source. Where did it come from? Who are the eyewitnesses? The earliest source we can find for the story is this woman, Samira Lamrani. At 10.08 a.m. on the 14th of June, Ryan Hooper of the Press Association tweeted this clip of her. A woman was gesturing like she was about to throw her baby. And if somebody could um, catch the baby, and somebody did, and a member of the public, a gentleman, ran forward and managed to catch the baby. Her quotes then spread to the Telegraph, to the Evening Standard, to the Daily Star, the Mail Online, the Guardian and the Independent. By the next day, her comments were in newspapers in the UK and all over the world. When we contacted her as part of this investigation, she declined to be interviewed, saying, my memory of that night is fading, I don't want to talk about it. This man also appeared in many newspapers. The initial source of the story was in The Sun on the 16th of June, two days after the fire. In the story, he's named Pat. He supposedly caught a four-year-old thrown from the fifth floor. But we've traced him. His name is actually Oluwasan Talabi, and he's actually holding his own daughter. They had both escaped from the 14th floor down the stairs. Another primary source is the architect and broadcaster George Clark. He lives near Grenfell, and he was woken by the noise of the fire around 1 a.m. I met him as fire crews were still battling the blaze the next afternoon. He'd been up all night, and he was clearly very tired. One guy caught a kid. A kid was thrown out of a window from like, the eighth floor, and a guy just caught him. It's amazing. Really? Yes. Do you, you saw that? Yeah. yeah. It's just unbelievable, you know? When we contacted George Clark, he told us that he did not wish to make any comment on the matter at all because, he said, it's such a contentious issue and I think it's so hurtful to so many people. Talk to people on the streets near the tower and chances are they'll tell you that, yes, the baby story is definitely true, but they themselves didn't see it. Newsnights attempted to contact every single person quoted as saying they did see the baby thrown and caught. Some told us that they had been misquoted. Others we couldn't find at all. There's no evidence that they actually exist. And none were prepared to do an on-camera interview. Yeah, we can hear people screaming. Jody Martin lives opposite Grenfell. He arrived at the fire at about the same time as the first fire crews. And something he saw might be able to shed some light on the source of the Grenfell baby story. I think it was the fourth floor, third or fourth floor, um, on, the, on this side of the building, there was a, a, a lady, like African Caribbean lady with her baby, and she was leaning out the window. It was more like a toddler. And there was smoke just bellowing out behind her. So obviously she was just trying to get oxygen. So she was at the lowest point of the ledge, you know, right down low, hanging, top half of a torso hanging out. But the, her, her infant at arm's length out. So the, so the baby was, so she, you think she was trying to get air? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely trying to get her. She wasn't. She wasn't throwing the baby. No, no, there was just. If you could see it, the, the whole apartment was just full of smoke, and the smoke was just bellowing out. And the only place you would have been able to get oxygen was to get your head below the ledge of the of the window, right. and that's what she was doing. 
So perhaps the Grenfell story came from people seeing one thing and assuming they'd seen the rest. According to psychologists, this is a common phenomena at such disasters. Human memory, it seems, is not like a videotape. And in such context, it's meaningless to talk about telling the truth or telling lies. The information we get from outside, from other people, from television, it appears uh, it's very accessible to us and we might have images associated with it and it might also um, be an event that where we would typically um, be able to predict what would happen. So if there was some kind of natural disaster, we'd expect there to be human suffering. And then what we do is if we have an incomplete memory, we might just draw inferences about what may have happened. Um, so that means that the memory just becomes, that information from outside becomes accessible and it can contaminate our memory. You would think that uh, an incident this extraordinary, this dramatic, would trigger a sort of wave of official reaction. There'd be records, a paper trail. But Newsnight has established that neither the police nor the ambulance service knew anything about it. The Metropolitan Police couldn't have been any clearer. They told us in a statement, we have no record of this incident. Another big reason to be sceptical is physics. The average weight of a six-month-old baby is around seven kilos, roughly the same weight as a heavy bowling ball. Even dropped from five storeys or 15 metres, this would be travelling at 17.15 metres a second or over 61 kilometres an hour. Double the height to 30 metres or 10 storeys and the ball is travelling at 24.25 metres a second or over 87 kilometres an hour. Is it plausible to think that someone could catch a bowling ball travelling at such speeds? Anything over one storey would be regarded as a significant fall. I would be sceptical about a baby falling from a very high height, um, that in some way someone catching that baby would you know, completely make the fall benign. I, I think that's difficult to, to understand, though, as I say, it's not something we see very often. Um, a baby falling from significant height, the bottom line is, that will expose the baby to significant risk of injury, almost irrespective of of the landing. What's more, Newsnight has established that no children from Grenville were treated in hospital for the serious type of physical injury that one would expect from such a fall. So why do so many people believe the story of the Grenville baby so strongly on what we can find at least is so little evidence? Is there something about a, a gut-wrenching, heartbreaking story like this that means we need to believe in miracles. It would shine a nice light on maybe human nature if it did happen, of the human nature of people that live in, in and around the area. So people here, after that tragedy, they're all about the community and we're looking after ourselves and the government's not looking after us, but we're taking action for ourselves and we're doing a rally and stuff like that. So it fits in with, it fits in with the, the, the story, the narrative. It is often not possible to definitively say that something didn't happen. All we can do is search for witnesses and scrutinise the evidence. We've done that and haven't turned up anything that suggests this amazing event actually happened. Indeed, all the available evidence points to the opposite conclusion. 